Hey guys, this video review is not paid for, this is a passion project. And as you can tell by the length of this video, I went completely overboard. In this first video, we will check out the Delta line of EcoFlow in detail. We will of course test and use this device, but in this video we will also talk a lot about the big picture. I will give you an overview of the giant installation of my dad. And as I will be saying in this video, the idea is to scale it down to a flat environment or, you know, to something small so that literally everyone, no matter the living situation, can become at least a bit autark, self-sufficient, self-reliant to power at least a fridge 24-7 in a blackout situation. But scaling this down for my flat will be covered in part two. And also shout out to EcoFlow for providing these units. These units are state-of-the-art market leading, so check out the description if you're interested. And with that said, enjoy this video. Check this out, top of the line EcoFlow gear. I'm currently way deep into blackout prevention, producing my own electricity, cutting down energy costs. Why you ask? Can you imagine I'm living in Central Europe and even here the chances for nationwide blackouts are on the rise. Energy prices are exploding, so a portable battery solution like this went from, yeah, yeah it's nice to have or you know, living the van life. It went from that to literally mainstream everyone needs this. I'm not even joking. I'm serious. It is always a good idea to become autonomous or independent or self-reliant in as many regards as possible, especially in crazy times like these. Honestly, I don't see the world becoming better anytime soon. Ukraine situation right now, what's next? Maybe Taiwan. I am for sure taking the safe route with this. Making and storing my own electricity and what's more, it is also great for the environment. Now this one is the first of two videos. In this one we will explore this system in detail. I will of course also explain, test and demonstrate all the functionalities and features. And lastly we'll check out the fully fledged autonomous system that I've built with my dad with a DIY 70 kilowatt hour battery that we built with second life cells. Very proud of this one and a 10, actually 12 kilowatt rooftop installation with off-grid and grid parallel functionalities. And then we'll try to take this, scale it down and create a system in my flat, also fully autark or autonomous, complete with a balcony power station to last at least two to five days of power outage, even with bad weather. To really prove the point that a mobile battery system is something that literally anyone can use and that it's definitely great to have. The second video will be a secret for now, but if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I will get to them in the next one. Big plans, so let's do this. So there we have the boxes, the big one with the main unit, 21.5 kilograms and the spare battery or the additional battery with 17.8 kilograms, so around 18 kilograms. Let's start with the main unit, so that's the front. Here we have one side, the other side right here, this sticker and also this sticker. And on the back, or this is actually the front, we have the battery, well, side view, I, I think, and that's the top. So if we open it up, we will be greeted by this right here. And underneath it is a thick piece of, well, foam. Well, it's not, it's not actually foam, but this condensed styrofoam. And here we have it. So this side is empty and on this side is a box with the accessories. This is what it looks like, so let's check it out. So this is the box. Nice branding right here and nothing on the sides, nothing on the bottom. Just a sticker. Well, sticker might be the wrong word. Oh, okay, okay. So like this. Okay, quite a lot. Okay, silica gel. This right here for the solar panels, nice. Yeah, this page and also this page right here. And here we have it. So this is the cable. This looks like an XT60 connector to me. And on the other side, these are the regular solar panel connectors. Awesome. Held together with a Velcro, nice detail. I love that. For now, I will keep it wrapped up. Then we also get this cable right here, this little plug on each side. Then we also get this regular, well, cable for devices with this connector you already know and then 
we also get this also with the xt60 connector and on this side we get the plug for a car 12 volts car adapter right here also held together with a tiny velcro strap love it so to recap xc64 solar panels xc64 well for cars this plug and the regular wall socket plug and how to use this solar connector plug and now let's check out the manual it's inside this plastic and i need to cut this open rip paper and there we go on the back we have this paper 24 months warranty claim it right now and back here we have the socials and the support hotline and right here we have the user manual so we have the disclaimer and the contents and by the way yeah extremely extensive manual right here love to see that so right here we have the specs well we have page one and two three and four five and six seven and eight nine and ten eleven and twelve and the next one is already german so there we have it and this is the battery so what i can recommend is to put your foot inside and you can grab it lift it out without removing the bottom side of this padding there we go and before we get to the close-ups let's unbox the other one as well so this time i will start from the actual front again with the with the side view of the battery smart extra battery then on the back we have well i ripped off this sticker already on the side same as on the main unit other side there is this this sticker again and also specs overview right here and again greeted by this and on top this time it's actually a foamy well top this is what it looks like and in here is just the spare battery no accessories the accessories are in here if you're wondering let's take a look at that first so here we have the accessories well first of all the cable of course comes in this plastic bag it has a velcro right here nice detail and that's the cable right here this is around one meter and these are the connectors so massive connectors right here and then there is also a manual this is what it looks like and it's wrapped in plastic and i need to cut this open so there we have it thick manual as you can see and back here is how to get 24 months of their warranty so let's check it out first of all a disclaimer also this so we have the contents and page number one safety instructions and getting started page four and five six and seven and the last page page number eight very well and again using my technique bottom padding and here we go by the way this is the secret compartment right here it's genius done with the unboxing let's get to my first impressions and check out all the functionalities all right so here we have them side by side the main unit and the extra battery i thought the form factor would be the exact same but this well this, the extra battery is quite a bit smaller as you can see and it's also quite a bit lighter all right let's check out the main one first again so is this the front or the side i don't know but that's the side with the two fans then this is the side for the actual spare batteries for the extra batteries so we have port one and port two there are also fan holes right here oh there are fans too so four fans two on each side and cable goes in like so but we will get to that in more detail later anyways then we have this side quite a lot going on here so up here we have the solar or car input we have the ac charge speed x stream charge with you know you can charge it with your wall socket power and overload protection 20 amps max and you can open it up like that so this switch and the fuse reset then we have four sockets with a dedicated ac on and off button right here and we have two of these ports with three amps max and for you know car hardware you can just plug it in right here 12 volts dedicated button right here 12 volt on and off nice buttons and lastly we have the front side with the display nice big display iot reset we have four usb a ports usb a and fast charge and we also have usb c ports two of them with 100 watts power transmission also with 
a dedicated on and off button. And lastly, down here we have the power button. Press and hold. And here we go. As you can see, it's currently charged 30%. So let's try this button. You get sound feedback. And also on this side, let's try this one. So with this one, you can hear a relay clicking. Love the sound. All right, let's see, activate this one and this one. Right here we have a QR code and instructions on how to download the app. And on top we have this sticker right here. Okay, it's quite hard to remove actually, but it comes off clean. That's the surface underneath here, but I will just keep this on for now. This is rubber. This is hard plastic, same as this surface. And I just flipped it upside down. This is what the bottom looks like. So big rubber padding right here perfect and also down here is another specs overview if you don't have the manual in reach i guess all right let's get to the other one the bottom of this one is a bit well the padding is a bit different as you can see right here material is obviously the same and there is an additional sticker right here so specs overview and safety warnings so this is one side this is the other side with the battery port same one as on the main unit of course no fans on the side for the extra batteries this is on the well on the back side i guess so four slots and here we have the front side with the power button down here press and hold and a nice display with a cover and that's the top right here another one of these stickers and if you press here it will pop open and in here you can fit the cable and the manual and this is what this compartment looks like and the lid. Yeah, that's that. So here we go side by side. Let's turn them on. As you can see, both of them are at 30%. I will connect them in a second. And by the way, if you turn on some of the features, first of all, you will get on-screen indicators. And also if you turn off the power bank with press and hold, then these will also get deactivated and when you turn it on again these will stay deactivated okay so now let's hook them up together and for this i will stack them so again as you can see the form factor isn't the same and also you cannot stack the big one perfectly on the smaller one it works as you can see but the big one will rest on here basically not inside the groove comparing it to stacking the small one on top of the big one it will actually sit inside the groove all right and now let's grab the cable and connect them so they are now sharing the power and they're also talking to each other so if i turn off one of them both of them will turn off and also the other way around very nice the top one is currently charging the lower one but only with around 45 watts and you can also see this on the lower one it's now getting charged with well that's the input output and the recharge time is around 37 hours all right and now it's time to look into the app so it's around an hour later and the extra battery isn't charging the main unit they were just balancing and now they're balanced so they are working in unison it's app time. When you type in EcoFlow, you will find this on top of the list. EcoFlow Power in New World. Let's check out this distributor. Okay, so they only have this app, so you can't go wrong. Let's install this app. By the way, meanwhile, I found a very interesting comment, so check this out. Okay, there we go. EcoFlow app. Agree. And okay, let's sign up. So here we go. Go to app. For sure. All right. So let's add a unit. Plus, these are all the models, Delta Max. And now, I think we need to click on IoT Reset. Press and hold, there we go. All right, the Wi-Fi is now flashing. Then find the Echo Flow right there. All right, I'm connected. Oh yeah, it only supports 2.4G Wi-Fi, no problem. All right, connecting. It will take 20 to 40 seconds to complete. All right, I'm linked and there we go. Now there is the list of devices and let's go. 
Okay, so love the graphics looking futuristic. I love it. Dark mode, another plus point for sure. Okay, let's go for the settings. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is awesome. Okay, let's activate the USB. Oh, check this out. And when you deactivate it on the app, it will also deactivate on the unit. Nice. So you can turn on and off everything in the app. Oh, there we go. Okay, when I turn off the power bank, what will happen? Keep on saying power bank. All right, disconnected. All right. This is fast. This is actually really fast. Nice. All right, let's go for the settings. You can rename it. Okay, I'm fine with that. Discharge level, you can... All right, let's go for 20 and... 80. AC charge speed. Oh, that is so cool. Wait, am I on custom? When the switch on the back is on, is not on fast, but on slow or custom, you can set the charge speed. And this is pretty cool. So the slower it is, the longer it will take, but the better for the battery it is. And it's from 100, oh, from 200 watts all the way to 2000. We have the car input. We can choose between four four, six and eight amps. And if you're confused about something, you can press the, the question mark. So charge speed, car input, so that you don't blow a fuse. You can also deactivate the beeping sounds. If you have a smart generator, then you can tell it when to start. So the lowest is from 30% all the way well, all the way up to 50, okay, so. But we're of course not going to go fossil on this one. Solar is the future and we're going to stay true to that. We have unit timeout from 30 minutes all the way up to never. Screen timeout, 10 seconds up to never. And we have the AC timeout, two hours, 24 hours, never. So this is not during use, but when it's just remaining idle, perfect. Okay, and lastly, we have the help center. Okay, this is a, an FAQ right here. We have the specs. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. So in case you don't have the manual or forget something, these are the inputs right here. So solar up to 800 watts and also output and USB and car output, right. And the extra battery, even the weight. Okay, and lastly, firmware. You can also upgrade the firmware through the app. Okay, and the current version is, wow, so let's go okay so let's upgrade the firmware let's do this that's a massive update i think so first of all downloading of course and then installing it okay as you can see the the unit is now down it's actually already installing it it seems okay so this will take some time so i will see in a bit that's the uh, progress right here so this is what it's looking like and we're at 75 percent so this will take quite a while but i think we're almost there so firmware is up to date let's go Okay, so I think that's new, but I could be wrong. Okay, so the settings stayed the same. Great. And firmware is now up to date. Yes. Done with the settings. Both units are balanced. And now let's just grab this USB-C cable, plug it in here. And then I will charge my phone. Okay, inserted. And now let's turn it on. And there we go. So 26 watts of output. Okay, as you can see, we're getting input from the top unit, from the extra battery, and we're charging the phone with 20, 26 watts. Also down here, you can see the, the charge rate for every port. Okay, now I also want to plug in something. Actually, let's plug in this light. And now let's use the app to activate it. Boom. There we go. Oh, it even has a soft start. Did you see that? The light came on gradually. Okay, so with both batteries, we can last up to 15 hours. And the output... Wow, this light is actually very, very <laughs> power efficient, I guess. I mean, that's like 15 watts at most. Okay, that's funny. Didn't expect that. And in app, we can see it's outflowing. We have the hours, input, output. I'm not sure what all the bad ratings on the app store are about because i did not find any issues it's working perfectly and the app is looking great so yeah perfect oh is this the usb-c symbol right here 
Yes, it is. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh yeah, as I said, 15 watts, this, this light is amazing. Okay, so it seems like every time you change something up, it will need a bit of time to do the calculations, but eventually it will of course show up. This is so cool. I love it. All right, let's move on. So charging it, I have already plugged it in, unplugged it. This will stop to rotate and now let's plug it in again. Boom. Well, charging it with the wall socket. There we go. Now it says recharging time right here. Oh, look at that. You will also get graphics. That is so cool. Also information about the extra battery. So we're now getting 380 watts in and sending 150 to the other one. So just that you can see the main unit is currently charging as well as the extra battery, of course. And in the app, we can change the charge speed again from only 200 all the way up to 2000. So let's go for 200. There we go. Now the recharge time went up to 15 hours. Input is actually a bit less than 200. And now let's crank it up all the way to 2000 watts. Okay, there we go, already ramping up. Okay, it's ramping up gradually. Now check this out as the recharge time drops, dropping fast. And now we can charge it up. I'm not sure if it, this is calculated to 100% or to the 80% that we set in the app, but now it will only take one hour. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, we're still ramping up. But let's see if if changing this will also change that. Ah. So for the first time we can now hear the fans, but this stayed the same. So this is the fan noise. It's probably fully powered up. And the other side. All right, so this is the inlet. On the other side is the outlet. So we're already at 33%, but I will dial this down to 400 again. And also the level, let's go down to 80. The fans have now returned to like a medium setting, I assume. Fan indicator right here. Oh, check this out. The charge level is actually displayed two digits after the comma. So very granular. And this is the level of the main unit and level of the spare battery. So charging with the wall socket is crazy, crazy fast. That is unplugged. And the fan will power down immediately. Very nice. So now this one is 33, the upper one is 31. Now it will balance. Well, eventually, I think. Yeah, I think we're ready to go for a solar charge. That's going to be interesting. So here we go, two panels in series, EcoFlow right here. This is the cable that came with the battery and it's fairly long, so that's a good thing. And now we can grab this XT60 connector and plug it in. Okay, when I think about it, it would probably be a good idea to move them out of the sun. One second. All right, so that's better. Cable right here. So that's the main unit, of course. Let's check the screen. So here we go. As we can see, input. Okay, so wiping them a bit more. So one of them has 200 watts. So we should have 400 in total. So we have a good 200 of steady inflow, 250. So each panel has 200 watts of power, but as you can see, this green, well, contraption is casting a shadow. So we're only getting around 280 watts of power. It's crazy how just a tiny shadow can really make a big dent into the yield of these panels. So 280 watts and in four hours it should be full. But now let's hook up the second battery as well. So second battery is plugged in. Okay, the upper one is at 55% charge level, this one at 57. So as of now, most of it is going up into the other battery. So we'll just leave this for a couple minutes, maybe hours. And if you want to access the app, you need to press on the IoT reset button for a few seconds. Then it will start the access point and then you, and then you can connect directly to the EcoFlow. And in the app, when you click on input, you can see the incoming solar power, AC and extra battery on zero, of course. If you click on output, we have 144 watts, so around half of it 
going to the extra battery. So it's great that you don't need Wi-Fi. You can connect straight to the EcoFlow and there is no third party involved. So that's great. And now we're going for a test. So the panels are right here. So like right here and my dad is my dad is going to cast a shadow and let's see what will happen. Ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay, this is, he's now covering. Oh my goodness, that's a massive drop. Input drop to 40, 40 watts, 170. He's just putting his hand on it. So just a little bit of a shadow will be a big problem. Again, there should be around 400 watts of input, but due to these sticks, it's already down to 280. So here we go. Usually this is the point where these videos end, but in this one, we are just getting started. So we have two solar modules, uh, standard modules with 60 cells each. One cell provides 0 0.5 volts in the maximum power point situation. That means uh, one module generates 30 volts and two modules uh, connected in series are producing about 60 volts. And each of the modules has three separate areas with 20 cells each protected by a diode. So if there's some shadow on the part of the cell, uh, these 20 cells go offline and uh, the remaining cells are then taking over. That means... Can uh, you show the cells on the... Yeah. So we, we have uh, 6 times 10 cells. So 20 cells have one uh, free running diode uh, in common. So we have three diodes. So if we are covering just one cell, that is sufficient to remove a third of the power of one module. That means uh, the 20 cells in series are now offline. The diode begins taking the current and only the other 40 cells are providing power right now. And it's a, it's a question of the algorithm, how fast it responds to to changes in, in the sun power. For example, if, a, if some clouds are covering the radiation, power is dropping really within seconds. And as soon as the full power is available again, it's then up to the MPPT algorithm to find again the maximum, maximum power point. Usually the algorithm should respond within a few seconds. That means whenever radi radiation changes within a few seconds, the new maximum power point should be uh, found. And from the app, can you tell, is it, is it looking all right, the algorithm? Yeah, my impression is that the algorithm is responding just quickly. So uh, if I cover part of the module, uh, it reacts within really some seconds and it comes up to the original power again within seconds. So it seems pretty fine. I'm covering now one complete module. So only the other module is providing power right now. So we have full power now. Yeah, the, the, the recovery to the full power is reacting within just one second. So after a bit of MPPT tracking, well, testing, we came to the conclusion that the algorithm works quite fast and that's just a bit of additional nerdy insight. For the end user, this doesn't matter whatsoever, but maybe this is interesting for some of you out there. And another question. So they say you have 800 watts of maximum input. What will happen when you go over this? Usually uh, the current is limited to 10 amps. What is specified in the technical documentation, that's the maximum current. And usually, uh, if more, even if more current is provided by the modules, uh, current would never exceed the 10 amps. The problem is, of course, you never must exceed the 100 volt maximum input voltage because that might damage the device. So that's uh, important during winter, for example, if the modules have very low temperature because the voltage of the modules is climbing when the temperature is, is dropping. So during winter, let's say if you have minus 10 degrees or even lower, uh, you can have 10 or 20 percent more voltage and that might be an issue to the device. Usually, uh, it depends on, on the implementation. Usually, if the, current, uh, if the voltage is higher, then the device just turns off. But if the voltage is much higher than the 100 volt, which is allowed, it might uh, get damaged. So that's, that's the most important value you, you have to keep in mind. Never exceed the maximum input voltage. 
So what you see here on the roof, that's about 12 kilowatt photovoltaic power. Uh, the modules, modules are quite old. They are just modules with 245 watt, watt per piece. So nowadays you have with the same module size uh, much more power. Usually the two days power is around 350 watt with the same module size. But already that old uh, installation provides about 12 kilowatt. The area is arranged in three strings with 13 modules each. Two strings are going to one 5 kilowatt uh, net tight uh, converter and the other string uh, will be directly connected to the DC battery. Oh, of course, an electric car. Greenhouse right here and down here. There are nine more. That's also just one string providing about two additional kilowatts with a much lower angle that's mainly for providing a nice place for sitting outdoors and providing energy from here is just an additional feature. So that's the, that's the converter for the nine modules. And unfortunately that uh, converter has much less power than the nine modules are providing. And for testing purpose, the additional power is now just heated with some electric device just to test what is the real power coming from the modules. So what we're seeing here, that's the 5 kilowatt uh, converter for the two main strings from the roof. So two times 13 modules are connected here with two separate uh, trackers. That means independently on, on some shadow or so, these two strings are controlled separately. Altogether that device is providing about 8000 kilowatt hours per year. And the third string? is right here. That's inverter or converter for the third one. So that's just a temporary installation because the third string will be tied directly to the battery within the next months, hopefully. Okay, talking about the battery, let's check it out. It's right here. DIY 70 kilowatt hours of 18650 batteries, two Tesla battery packs right here and also what's this maybe give us an overview of that as well yeah so that's the main inverter between the battery and the grid that's a five kilowatt uh, bidirectional converter which can charge the battery from the grid or also discharge to compensate for the energy demand and uh, that converter can also run in eye landing mode so it means if the grid is failing, I have a manual switch, so I can switch over to, to island operation and then I can operate the whole house for some days. Unfortunately, in the moment, there's no connection between the photovoltaic strings and the battery. That's one of the next steps that I can feed directly the power coming from the modules into the battery so that I'm really uh, independent from the grid. That's just one of the next project steps. And that's an interesting issue because in blackout situations most of the photovoltaic systems are not operational because the normal inverters cannot run uh, without the grid. But some of them can do that and it's of special interest to run such a system together with a battery. That's the future to have uh, a battery connected to every photovoltaic system. Okay, so now that you know this power station, what would be your thoughts? What can you do with it and how would you scale down your system to like a, to like a flat? What my impression is right now to this, to this device, it's, it's really very interesting uh, size because if you combine the main unit with both the auxiliary units, you have an altogether capacity of 6 kilowatt hours. That's usually sufficient to provide uh, power during the night. So if you have uh, photovoltaic energy during the day and you can store in that in, in the devices, you have sufficient energy. And what is a very interesting feature, we haven't tested that yet, but as we see in the application, uh, it's possible to control the charging device from the grid in 100 watt steps. That means if insufficient photovoltaic power is available, it seems possible to remotely control the device to 
add some additional energy from the grid depending on on the on, on the grid situation what right now evolving uh, are energy communities and it's very interesting if for example uh, a friend of you has the photovoltaic system and you have no photovoltaic but you can collect his surplus power he is feeding the power to the grid and you are collecting that power and feeding it to your battery and during the night you're using that amount of energy that's a very new approach which is which is not very common right now but that's one of the next steps because if you have a photovoltaic system during the summer months you are usually gaining much more energy that you can use by yourself and if you connect it to an energy community uh, your friends your neighbors can also connect to that community and can get your surplus power for better price than the usual grid price is and for such application that kind of device seems really very suitable. It's still, of course, no grid tied inverter. It's more or less a kind of islanding situation, but you can combine all those features. And what is a very important feature, uh, you are blackout resilient because uh, if a blackout occurs, the devices which are connected to the device are still running. And what is an important advantage, most of the photovoltaic systems we have right now, all the grid-tied photovoltaic systems are usually not uh, operational during a blackout, but the EcoFlow box can do that. So you can, even without grid, collect photovoltaic energy and run your devices, not only the the 230 volt AC devices, but also 12 volt devices and all that USB stuff and so on. So it seems to be really ver very versatile device. Uh, to be honest, I like it. As of now, you can't automate a recharging over the power grid. So you would need to do this manually. So if you're in a energy community, you could check how much energy is available and then set the charge speed to this? No, that, that, that depends on the implementation. Usually uh, the energy community should be able to provide that information automatically. So that depends on the IT implementation. For example, I'm participating in an energy community and I get a real-time feed uh, which uh, power is available within the community. So if we can, on the other hand, then control the EcoFlow box to tell the AC charger which power it should collect from the grid, that's a perfect solution. Of course, it needs some integration work. Right now, of course, there's no energy community on the one hand providing that information and the kind of application which is controlling the EcoFlow. That's just the question how open are the protocols and of course that's really an important issue to have open protocols to connect energy communities and such battery devices and all those things together but i was trying to say did, you can't automate this yet but you could you could do it manually if you're right, in right, community. right now you 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 could do so but that's a boring job of course because depending on the weather of course if there's really a lot of additional energy available and you can say okay i'm now turning it on and i i let it run for several hours then it's fine but for example if you have cloudy weather and the energy offers are changing from minute to minute then that's uh, rather difficult work yeah at the end of the day that needs to be automated of course okay i see so the last question would be obviously the scaled down version would be for the flat would be a balcony power station and just save the power in the in the battery and then maybe power the fridge or do you have any other idea no that's a perfect solution of course uh to use the full uh, capability of that box, uh, 800 watt photovoltaic power, that's at least two modules, so on the balcony uh, there might not be sufficient place to mount two such modules. It depends on the situation, because usually if you mount the modules in a vertical manner, you have a certain amount of, of loss 
uh, in relation to the nominal power because usually you should have a mounting angle of about 45 degrees or so so especially during the summer months where the sun is coming from a very high angle you might have 30 or 40 percent loss so the minimum you can do you can try to to mount it uh, with at least an angle of let's say 10 to 15 degrees that would improve the, the efficiency uh, a lot I think. So that might be the only limiting factor if you really want to do that with your balcony. Of course if you have sufficient place to mount let's say three or four modules everything's perfect then. My theory is that with one module you might be able to keep the battery topped off to power a fridge. Yeah, it's it's rather easy to to calculate that because if you have one kilowatt of power, you're usually under good situation. You earn about five kilowatt hours per day. So with a module of 200 watt, you you're gaining one kilowatt hour. So for for the fridge, that's sufficient on sunny days, of course. But again, that really depends, especially on such balcony situations. Uh, how the module is mounted, how much sun are you really getting at that place. Depends from situation to situation. But it's a good start anyway. That's right, it's a good start. And as you can see, while we filmed these videos, we climbed from, I think, 53 all the way up to 60% on both batteries. So they keep the balance quite perfectly. And yeah, that's the app again. Input solar, 280 watts of solar input on a consistent basis. Perfect. Okay, we're now checking the sine wave. So if you're interested, that's what it looks like. That's what comes out of the box. Looks quite normal. Proper frequency. There might be some high frequency distortions, but that would need additional uh, investigation, but it, it seems fine. And that's down here, that's the load. That's just the soldering iron. Ah, okay. Load right now. That's about 100 watt. So that's not, not so much, but doesn't change anything on the, on the curve. I will list and link everything about the EcoFlow Delta line in the description, as well as more information about this awesome power system, about this awesome power station. I love the design, I love the functionalities, the capabilities, and most of all, I love the stress-free feeling that I get from having this. As I said, if you have questions, leave them below. There will be a second video. And before you go, smash that like button, then subscribe, ring the bell and click all to never miss amazing tech magnet videos. That's it for this one. Enjoy your day and I will see you soon.